tell me what's your motive Hi beautiful babes, it's your girl Aubrey and welcome back to another video If you didn't know, now you know, welcome to Curve Logic So I am coming to you today fresh face, no makeup Because I feel like today we need to have a conversation And I am going to be transparent today And I wanted to share you some tips that, you know, get me in the mood, boost my self-confidence, and, you know, overall just boost my aura and continue my journey of self-love. So if that interests you today, keep watching. So what inspired me to do this video is that honestly, truthfully, y'all, I've been in a funk. You know, I am prone to a seasonal shift in emotions. And as you know, it's getting fall. That means it's getting darker earlier. And especially for me where I'm at, it's been raining all week. And I'm telling you like all week. And I'm just like been in a funk, like very laggy, very, you know, I've been one, you know, it's an issue when you want to play your sad playlist when you're not sad. So I was, I've been bumping my playlist all week and I'm like, wait a minute, y'all. Like, come on. I'm, it's not that time of the month. Like, there's no reason I should feel like this aside from the weather being crappy outside. So I thought, let me take in these tips. Let me start, you know, practicing what I preach. And I wanted to showcase that, hey, everybody has low times, but that does not stop you from your journey. And that does not deter you from being the greatest that you can be. So hopefully with these tips we discussed today, we can change that narrative. We can boost, you know, we can add a little bit of serotonin to our life and Add some sunshine to us that hopefully, you know, reflects outside because I need a little bit more from Mother Nature. But enough talking. Let's get started. Just wanted to put in a disclaimer before we get started that these tips are not going to change your aura or change your self-confidence overnight. Um, these are not the end-all be-all. Unfortunately, we have a lot of work to do when it comes to ourself, learning to love ourselves, and loving us through the journey. However, I'm hoping with these five tips, we can create a new understanding of who we are, fall in love with ourselves even more, and just make this journey a little bit more easier in the terms of self-love, self-confidence, and being you and standing in who you are. So this first one is going to sound cliche because it's in every conversation, but that is self-care. Self-care is real. And I know that self-care has, you know, become a buzzword and people just want to throw that in there when they want to treat yourself, aka me. That's me. I'm the person. But did you know there's actually eight types of self-care? I'll put in the image right here and it's good to know. I feel like, you know, the more you learn about yourself, fall in love with yourself and understand who you are, the more you can attribute to what type of self-care do I need right now? And that's everything from, you know, doing a face mask or going on a walk to journaling to even doing a social and spatial cleanse from creating new support systems to creating boundaries and and creating a safe and authentic environment of who you are. Self-care does not limit to face masks, sheet masks, and going to get your nails and toes done, which although those are authentic and have the same type of value, sometimes when you learn to love yourself and understand who you are, you realize that those things are great, but other self-care items can work even better. So I encourage you all to, you know, take a step, learn something new, do a different type of self-care and see how that changes your mindset and your overall emotions. Now, number two is going to sound a mess. Like, how does this relate to boosting confidence? But in reality, that's creating routines. Um, creating routines cause less stress, less anxiety. If you know what you're doing, the moment you wake up or before you go to bed, it's blah, 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 step one, two, three. It creates a sense of security, rotation, um, routine. So you know that every night before 11 p.m., I'm going to journal or I'm going to do my face and skincare. I'm going to do a body scrub, whatever that is that ties into that self-care that I talked about before. Add that into a routine. It makes everything easier. I wake up in the morning and I do the same three things. I wake up, do my business in the bathroom and look at my self affirmations, which we'll talk about a little bit later. Um, but these three things, it's like ABC, one, two, three, Michael Jackson, Jackson five. But it's just, it's been robotic. It's autonomic now. I know what to do and I know how these three steps, whether what day, wherever I'm at around the world or even at home, I know that I must do these three steps to ensure that my day is off to a good start. 
Now, I can't guarantee that my day will stay the same, but I know that these three things or whatever routine that you have created for yourself will prep you for a good day or end you on a good note, whatever that may be. Um, and, you know, as everybody says, it takes 30 days to make or break a habit. So I can I encourage you to build a routine, whether that's in the middle of the day, in the morning or at night. And it doesn't have to be robust. It doesn't have to be glamorous. Whatever you choose, make it easy and sustainable because sustainable is key to create this habit, create this routine and make sure you're putting yourself in a good mood. Now, the third thing um, can be a lot for some people. Me personally, I have tried it and I will do a good stint for, you know, two to three days and then be like months. But it also is interesting to go back and look at it. And that is journaling. I encourage everyone to journal or track how you feel each and every day. Um, they, there's things called five minute prompts, um, creative writing, whatever you feel, I feel like you should reflect on the day so you can look back days on end or years and see how was I feeling that day? Or like, you know, for me, I was looking at my high school, you know, journals and like, wow, I was so caught up about this small situation where the person I am today wouldn't even give it a second thought. And I feel like that is a true reflection of growth. And you can see your growth over time mentally, as well as physically, emotionally, and spiritually. So I encourage you all to journal. And if journaling isn't your thing, I realize, you know, I can keep it for a couple weeks and then just stop altogether. I encourage you to download a mood tracker app. Um, I will show you right here. This app I have used for over a year. It's amazing. And it's super easy. I've just started incorporating like the little notes section, like what I did today or motivational things that I just felt like captivated me. Like whether that was me playing Sims, which is probably on there way too many times each day, or something that I felt was important to share about my day. So when I go back, I'm like, dang, that was a good day. Or it wasn't the best day, but now I know that the next day was even better. So it was no problem. It was no tears shed. Um, so I encourage you to track your moods, track your feelings, and journal if you can. However, it's 2021. Whatever you decide to do or however you see fit to journal and track those moods, I encourage you to do it because at the end of the day, just looking back on what you've done and what you've accomplished so far is the most important thing out of everything rather than seeing, you know, a dear diary every two seconds. So I encourage you to journal and I will drop some mood apping tracks, mood app tracks, mood tracking apps below so you can give it a try if that's your jig so now this fourth thing is going to sound a little cliche but i promise you i've tried it many times and it's changed my outlook on life drastically and that is to start romanticizing your life um i went through this thing called post post grad blues both for my undergrad and grad and i was just like wow i am in a funk and it's worse when you're, you know, working from home or doing the same monotonous routines every day. But realizing that in those routines, in that day to day action, there are sparks of joy and things that make you happy and want to keep you going. So for me, romanticizing my life is just like getting up, getting dressed and being excited for the day, putting on my happy playlist and putting my best foot forward. It doesn't matter if I'm going downstairs into my little office to do work or if I'm going out on the town, I want to make sure it's the best day ever. And for me, romanticizing my life looks like, you know how like those those cringy 2000s, early 2000s movies when you like wake up and get ready for the day, my mind immediately shot to Legally Blonde, um, where she's getting up, doing her thing and just romanticizing her life. That is what I do. I wake up every morning looking a hot ass mess but I picture that I am in this cringy 2000s movie and cameras are on me. And it just, it gives a new feeling. It's fun. Like, sometimes we realize that we're doing the same thing every day. And luckily for those, that may not be an issue. But there's always good things in routines. But there are always good things to spice it up, change up the rotation, and, and shake the table a little bit. So I encourage you to... Get that inner child imagination out. Have fun with your life and start romanticizing it again. Um, the pandemic kind of stole that from us, but I am reclaiming it and I want you to reclaim it too. And last but certainly not least are my favorite tip. And I feel that has helped me so much. And I realize that it has been an outline in my entire life is self affirmations. And I know some people don't believe it and that is totally fine, but I encourage you to give it a shot. Like we said, 30 days to make or break a habit. 
And I feel like there, everybody feels that there is some type of rules when creating self affirmations. When no, you put into the world what you want to achieve. So I will post some of my self affirmations here. And honestly, I pulled that last quote from a lyric from Flo Millie and I have read it ever since. And the other ones is just things that I want to achieve for me. So personally, my self affirmations are guided by my self confidence, my self love journey and loving and understanding who I am. But don't get it twisted. Self love and self affirmations do not have to just strictly be about your journey and loving who you are. They can be about bringing money in, accepting that new career, pivoting in your life, like whatever your self love and self journey and self affirmations is, it's you. You can decide what you want to put in those affirmations. And I encourage you to take it a step further. Make it creative. Like I went on Canva and created a cute background for my self affirmations. So I say it every single day and I put it as my background so I don't have to go and sift through all the photos. It's easy, it's accessible, and it's it works. Like, you know, I found this quote and it was like, your soul doesn't know um, what you're saying is right or wrong. So if you are constantly putting negative thoughts in your head, your soul believes that that is true. Um, so why don't you switch it up? Put a little bit of positive thoughts into the atmosphere. And you saying it, like right now, it's it's automatic. I know, I don't chase, I attract. Whatever good to me will come to me. It's like automatic. I know what to say and it feels good. My heart feels a cleanse. And over time, I promise your mood will change. Your mood will shift and you'll be like, damn, I am who I want to be because of these affirmations. And starting this off, I recommend you do it at least three times um, a rotation. So I do it in the morning when I'm doing my morning business and I am, you know, just reading it through, saying it, speaking it, or you can even think it, read it aloud or read it silently. Whatever you choose to do, I just really want you to do it because it's changed my mindset so much, especially in the pandemic last year. I had a lot of fun creating these, but I also had a lot of wounds I needed to heal in order to create these. So I encourage you to do the same and let me know what you think. So now that we have wrapped up the five things to boost your confidence, boost your mood and overall energize that aura that you have, I hope you all enjoyed my tips. These tips have helped me beyond belief. And for me, being not a believer at first, I can definitely attest that some of these things have changed me for the better and have really helped me on my self-love journey. But I want to remind you all that this journey that we have is never ending. It is going to be lifelong because we are changing every day, minute by minute, day by day. And I want to encourage you that through the highs and the lows, the ups and the downs, we are still on this journey and hopefully with these tips, you can look back and realize, wow, 2020 Aubrey and 2010 Aubrey was way different than 2020 Aubrey. Even last month, Aubrey was way different than today. And I hope that with these tips, you can say the same about yourself. I am so excited for you to try these five tips that I have used and incorporated into my life. But also, if you have any tips, please drop them down below. I am always open to taking in more, <clears throat> learning more things, and hopefully helping us all along the way. We got this, y'all. We are on this journey together, and I'm so excited to see where it takes us. I love you all. Do not forget to like, comment, and subscribe. And until next time, stay fabulous! Tell me what's your motive.